안녕하세요. 제이누맨 켄지맨입니다. I'm just kidding. Hi everyone. I'm Kenjmin and today we're talking about some of the work that was entered for the Create a Quorumon contest. So I reached out to some of the creators on Twitter and they were generous enough to allow me to show their work to all of you, my viewers and the Quorumon community. I'm really excited to show some of these artworks and I hope that everybody enjoys all of these pieces as much as I did. I hope that I can reach out to more creators as well and see if they would be willing to let me feature their art in videos just like this. But without further ado, let's get started. All right, our first entry that we have here is Elephant by Gil. So Gil got the idea of Elephant because elephants are their favorite animal and they wanted to see one in Koromon. The creator wanted to have a ghost elephant and took inspirations from Jack in the Box, White Elephant Gift Exchange, and Scary Clowns. The creator thinks making Elephant a pop-up monster really shows its mischievous nature that loves surprising people. For the Evolution Fan Tusk, there's a visual pun as instead of hiding in a wind-up box, it's now a trunk like elephants have. So here there's even a quote. It makes its home in music boxes, replacing the inner mechanisms with its body. It eagerly waits for anyone to wind up its tail. If some time has passed, it will move into homes and schools. And we even get to see some cool illustrations of Elephant. And in this illustration here, we have Elephant's Evolution Fantusk. And just like the creator Gill says, Fantusk is a visual pun as instead of hiding in a wind-up box it's now a trunk because elephants have trunk i think that's a really good pun or play on words i think and just looking at where the top visuals appear we can see where gill got the inspiration for elephant and fantusk's illustration visuals awesome job gill Let's move on to the next art. Up next, we have Plagin by the Drew Gamer. Plagin is based on a plague doctor that were known for wearing the hats, cloaks, bird masks, and carrying a lantern while they went to help those suffering with the plague. Aside from the lantern, everything on Plagin's design is made of skin and feathers to give the appearance of a plague doctor. Despite the dark appearance and what it is based on, the creator wanted to give Plagin a sad backstory on how it appears and how it reacts in nature. The Drew Gamer also provided Plagin with a description. Born from the guilds of medics that failed their patients, Plagin wanders the land to help those in need, using its lantern to guide it to those that are injured. Many people in Koromon are scared of it, however, and will avoid it at all costs, making Plagin very sad. I honestly really like Plagin's illustration. All of the shading details in the lantern and even the foot is really remarkable. I really like how Plagin resembles so much a plague doctor and hearing the backstory of Plagin really makes me yearn for Plagin. It really makes me sympathize. Up next we have Phantom by XD. Phantom's name is a combination of the word phantom and tome. Phantoms are creatures that tend to inhabit abandoned, man-made places like deserted buildings. They are especially fond of places with books or other literature they can potentially blend in with. They enjoy hiding in dark places and will attack if disturbed. Phantoms make use of their rectangular wings to fly by flapping them open and closed. 
They can bend the strap running across their back at will and can even use it to hit or grab onto objects. The design for Phantom was inspired by a combination of horned owls and poltergeist activity involving books levitating in midair. Because the Create a Coromon contest made mention of creativity and originality as judging components, it was designed to stick out and a bit unconventional. I think Phantom's design is definitely unique. I've never seen anything like this before. I think what really makes Phantom stand out to me is the straps on its sides. The straps act as arms and in this illustration you can even see Phantom grabbing onto a heart which is super duper cute. I think that adds a lot of cuteness points for me. Up next, we have Terraskull by Tefren. Inspired by the Tarrasque mythology, Terraskull is a very temperamental creature against everyone else, but are very loyal and trustworthy to their partners. Terraskull is a rare kind of Coromon, just like Lapras from Pokemon, Terraskull has no evolution or a pre-evolution. I think Terraskull's design is so unique. It looks menacing yet super powerful. And I like that the creator added its color palette to the bottom right of the image. We get to see the colors that they used and we get to see the technique of their blending. I think you did a great job, Tefren. Up next, we have Tor Taco by Adam. Adam says that Tor Taco's design was initially something the creator made for a goofy fake mon, just a turtle using a taco as a shell. Simple as that. It honestly just came to Adam one day, and he said, Yep, this is their magnum opus. I think this is definitely a unique Coromon. I mean, Pokemon has different types of designs like vanillish which is an ice cream cone and some other food pokemon out there i mean there's a snowflake for crying out loud so i think tor taco is definitely a cutie i mean just look how how its tongue sticks out its eyes do look a little lifeless but i think that adds to its cute factor well anyways adam i think you did a great job with tor taco Up next, we have Necromat by Arish. Arish says that for Necromat's inspiration and background, the creator just wanted to represent the culture they are from since Necromat is based on a native deity as stated on their Twitter post. There aren't many archaeological descriptions of Bulalaka, so they just took his divine domains of plague, disease, and space, and his bird head, along with some creative liberty to create Necromat's profile. Necromat's name is just the words Necro and Comet glued together, so the pronunciation isn't too complex. And here we can even see a description for Necromat, believed to have descended to Velua on a passing comet. The real Necromet is the crown of stars above the skull of an unfortunate Cormon that fell to its deadly and corruptive clutches. Enveloped in billowing toxic space dust, it wreaks havoc on ecosystems it comes across while scouting the world with its eldritch eyes that are composed of a wide array of elements. Researchers are baffled by how Necromet reproduces, but every specimen studied concludes one thing. It only takes the heads of avian Coromon, while the rest of its skeletal composition can be from any boned organism, even humans. I think that's a pretty freaky background if you tell me. It sounds like Necromat uses just about any kind of creature that it can find to make its body. But wait, does it only use dead bones or...? Up next, we have Fun Gash by Lil McSqueezy. McSqueezy heard about Coromon from John, their fiance. And when he told McSqueezy about the contest, the creator was immediately excited. They both started throwing ideas around like one being a turtle with an igloo on its back. And they thought of some gator ideas, but those were scrapped when McSqueezy remembered this bleeding tooth mushroom. The creator loved this thing, and when they showed John, they both started designing. 
McSqueezy was actually shopping at Costco when they both came up with the name. McSqueezy immediately had this design already cooked in their head, and it was really a struggle to come up with the potent and perfect colors. By the end of it all, McSqueezy is firmly proud of this design. I was honestly kind of confused about if Fungash had a face, because I was just so focused on the mushroom cap that I completely forgot to look at the stem. I was just so wrapped up in all the details that I completely looked over. But I mean, face aside, I think the attention to detail on Fungash is just amazing. I love the color variations, especially going from the standard to potent to perfect. I mean, just, just look at how perfect the perfect color is. And here we get a more detailed description of Fungash. Fungash are a very skittish and sensitive water type Coromon. They tend to be sought out for the sweet nectar excreted from their top, but tends to be hard to find. When frightened, their body is pulled into their shell-like top, which hardens, protecting the fungash. When caught, the sweet nectar is used as a sugar substitute due to its many health properties. I think fungash's description just adds so much more depth to fungash, and fungash isn't just a Coromon that you can have as a partner, it also serves as a very useful partner that you would want to have around the house. Awesome job, little McSqueezy! Up next, we have Rabat by J.L. Seiko. So Rabat is based off of a creature known as Walpertinger, which has a body comprising of various animal parts, generally wings, antlers, a tail, and fangs, all attached to the body of a small mammal. The most widespread description portrays the Walpertinger as having the head of a hare, the body of a squirrel, the antlers of a deer, the wings of a bird, and occasionally the legs of a pheasant. Jackalope is also similar to the Walpertinger in that they are both horned rabbits, but it has no wings. A rabbit with bird wings and antlers sounded divine, so the creator thought, why not create a rabbit that looks a bit evil? So the creator designed it as a bat-winged rabbit with a bit of demonic elements. I think the color palette for Rabat definitely adds on to the evil aspect of the lore behind Rabat and the lore of the creature that it's based off of. I'm completely sorry if I butchered the names, but Rabat definitely looks cute while also menacing. Up next, we have Willown by Lethal. Willow comes from Will-O-Wisp plus Fawn. The inspiration behind the design is mostly the creator's personal aesthetics. They love a good mix of cute and graceful with creepy. Bonus points if it's purple. As for backstory, Lethal does not have too much other than taking inspiration from the Will-O-Wisp myths themselves. A little light in the darkness of the woods would tempt lost travelers to follow it. If the person is of good nature, the light will guide them out. But if they are a wicked person, the light will guide them further and further into the woods, where not only their body will become lost, but their very soul, forever trapped inside the forest. Lethal also liked playing around with the idea that the flame is the actual Coromon and the deer is simply what it took to possessing, hence why the fawn is partly decayed, but Lethal felt it was a bit too complex and a bit too dark. Up next we have Volmantis by JPRM41. I asked JP if he had anything to add on for the description of Volmantis, but JP says that it's just a praying mantis that uses luminosity as bait. I think that's really interesting. So on the left we have Volmantis, the pre-evolution, and then the evolution on the other side is Thunclaw. If we pay close attention, it looks like the tail for both Volmantis and Thunclaw are what illuminates and attracts opponents. And when we look at the details for Volmantis, it looks like everything gets an upgrade once it evolves into Thunclaw. So you did an awesome job, JP! Up next, we have Heads Up by Yggdrasil. 
The name is basically pronounced like saying heads up, but the S is a Z. The name came about since it's more or less, since the name came about since it's more or less a floating head. Yggdrasil didn't plan too much of a backstory, but it's something along the lines of it's a spirit of a prankster or a rogue type of person, and it will steal or move things as a joke. Yggdrasil can't say there was much of anything that really inspired the design. The creator basically made a page full of doodles and picked their favorite one. Heads up sounds like a more playful version of Haunter. And I'm only mentioning Haunter from Pokemon just because of the doodle here of Heads Up with its tongue sticking out. Up next we have Petal Pine by Lordy. Lordy says these two are heavily inspired by one of the creator's friends and a daydream Lordy had about tails making a flower. Lordy's friend really likes foxes, pink, and sakura. So it felt like a fun combination to work with. Petal Pine is pronounced like the words Petal and Pine, while Yakura's name is pronounced like Yakura. What I really like about Petal Pine and Yakura is that the flower on Petal Pine's tail becomes much more defined once it's evolved into Yakura. Up next we have Pillet by Al Link. Owl Link is a Pokemon fan and they made many fake Mon years ago. They don't remember many of them, but they remember some creatures they made and that was one of their favorites. That's why Owl Link included it in Create a Coromon Contest. Pillet is a brick Coromon who balanced its head while getting strong arms and legs. When it evolves, it becomes Tau War. Tau War is a tower Coromon. Its name comes from tower and war. Its tower forms once it gets stronger arms and legs, but it feels the need to become more powerful. That's why a tower is formed on its head to maintain training. Also, the tower can be useful in battle because the tower throws rocks while Tau War is fighting. Finally, it evolves into Fightress. Phytris is a fortress fighter Coromon, as its name mentions. It has trained all its life, so it can lift a fortress on its head to maintain balance between its strong arms and legs. This Coromon is a fighting and rock type, and its abilities are sturdy or intimidate. Up next, we have Terrafint by DADA. Terrafint use their massive claws on their trunks to get a good grip on the ground and expel high pressure air or water into it. This can create various hazards like sinkholes or geysers. DA also mentions a fun fact. Terrafints are sometimes called potatoes. The original design was an elephant with two trunks, one that inhales, the other can expose high pressure air or water. So the image on the left is what DA submitted for the Create a Coromon contest. And the pixelated version on the top right hand side is the original version of Terrafint. I think the tusks make Terrafint look a lot more intimidating and especially the claws on its trunk. Terrafint's horns are also very, very long. So I don't know if Terrafint uses its horns in battle. Maybe it's just by design. But I wonder how a Terrafint would use its horns. Maybe it's more of like a protective shield? Either way, DA, I think you did an awesome job with Terrafint. Nicely done. Up next is a creation by Cell. It's a cappuccino dragon. Cell doesn't have too much to say about this art except that their inspiration was through a lot of cappuccino art. Honestly, I think the first evolution looks super duper cute. It's a cute little dragon in a teacup. And then through its evolution, it becomes bigger and holds the teacup. I wonder if the cup is also a part of the dragon. Does the dragon need the cup to survive? Either way, this is definitely an interesting take on a Coromon. 
It almost makes me think of Spirit Tomb from Pokemon because Spirit Tomb comes from a rock and it has to possess a rock just to embody a form. So maybe this Cappuccino Dragon is the same concept as Spirit Tomb? Up next, we have Squail by Calliope. Calliope basically wanted to make a quail bird that has a failed Mimicry. The evolved form has a sort of menacing looking monstrous Mimicry to its plumage. Squail's plumage just confuses. The creator drew the design maybe eight years ago and saw the Create a Coromon contest and thought, they'll just do a few more drawings of it, made the page and submitted. Calliope loves the demo of Coromon and is excited to play the full game on release and maybe play their own little creature in the game. I don't know if I should be afraid or if I should be mesmerized by it. And I think that's what it wants. That's what Calliope is definitely going for. Up next, we have Silagast by Binko. Binko the creator chose these names based on Silly and Ghoul for Silly Gast and Phantom and Harlequin for Phantoquin. Binko thinks these names fit in well with Coromon like Berry Alice, Megalobite, and Lunar Pup. Binko tried to keep the style of Coromon with elements of modern white face clowns, modernized jesters, Classic jesters were a bit different than today's stylized jesters. French mimes, mostly just in the perfect color palette, and some fun spooky elements to fit that ghost typing. I could definitely see Silagast and Fantaquin having another evolution. I don't really know what it would be. Maybe it would be like its final evolution juggling some like balls or something? It would just be really, really awesome. I, I'm kind of hoping that there is a third evolution now. Either way, I think you did an awesome job, Binko. And up next, we have Goat by Chin. The inspiration that Chin the creator used was Kamosan from Yokai Watch. Although Chin feels they could have made Goat more goat-like in appearance, they wanted to go for a cuter aspect of Goat. Chin says they put a lot of time trying to figure out its perfect form color scheme, mainly because if their entry makes it into the actual game, they would love to hunt a perfect one. And we can see the description of Goat in this image says, Goat are always proudly part of a herd. While they don't attack humans, making them seem like quite nice Coromon, they actually just don't see them as worthy opponents. Wow, I really like that. It makes Goat seem like it's actually a lot more hardcore than we think it is. It can attack humans, but it chooses not to because most of them just aren't worth the energy. And last but not least, we have Blubba by Lucky. So Lucky says that they wanted to create an ice type Coromon because looking at the wiki, they saw that there weren't that many, surprisingly, at least as of writing this. So Lucky got started on thinking what polar animal it would be based on. And after a while, they settled on a beluga whale because they figured it would be the best fit for their vision moving forward. And also because there wasn't a whale Coromon yet. The name Blubba originates from the word blubber, as in whale fat, and Bubba, which is slang for brother. Both of which represent Blubba perfectly, because Blubba have a lot of fat and are also protective of smaller Coromon and other Blubba, acting as a sort of big brother to them. I think that description makes Blubba seem so much cooler. It isn't just a protector, it's a brother. And when you think of a brother, you think of someone who's protective or someone who bullies you. But Blubba isn't the bully. Well, I think that's going to be it for this video, folks. I wanted to include a lot more creators as well, but with the time frame, I think this video is long enough.
I'll make more videos just like this and I'll try to get them out as soon as possible. And if you are a creator that entered the Create a Coromon contest, or if you have any Coromon fan art that you would like me to share, then go ahead and then go ahead and comment on this YouTube video, or you can reach out to me via Discord or Twitter. Thank you to all the creators who allowed me to mention their art in my video. And best of luck to all of you who entered the Create a Coromon contest. I hope to see all of your work in more productions in the future. Thank you all so much for tuning in, and I will see you in the next video.